Hi Sven, we talked a lot about the two Selene guides, but SDR also has a lot of other components. For example, the SDR feeder, which we can see here in the background, which is this uh, blackish uh, tube. Uh, what is the SDR feeder and where, d where is it located? Yes, so basically uh, when you look at the SDA instrument and uh, remember our introduction video, you'll know that we have this divergating beam which is then refocused with those elliptical guides. And basically within the bunker we have the first of those elliptical guides. It is a somewhat crude guide. Uh, it creates a large focus spot but that's okay here because we have our slit system here. But that means as we're building a crude guide um, we can just uh, have a guide where we have basically a single piece of um, guide outside of the bunker uh, which uh, is somewhat uh, three and a half meters and then we have another uh, crude piece inside the monolith and today we are going to talk about this part outside of the monolith uh, and you can see it right behind me. So this is called the feeder of Estia. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's have a look. Yes, so when we go to our feeder, basically what we have is a piece of guide which goes over the whole length of this tube, within the tube. That piece of guide is, has to be in vacuum because starting here at the upstream end of the feeder, we will only have one single vacuum all the, all the way to the um, sample. And therefore basically, and as everything is connected, obviously we need a vacuum chamber. It's what you can see here. Inside you have the guide. The guide is standing on such kinematic mount feet, where you can see here the upstream foot and down here you can see the downstream foot. And the guide is separated from the vacuum chamber uh, through those bellows and the vacuum chamber is then sitting on its own feet. The whole system then combined is standing on an elevated floor, if you will, that's this um, concrete slab below. And that concrete slab again is sitting on some shimmed plates. Uh, those, uh, are, those give us more flexibility for the compensation of potential ground sinking or whatever. So in case the instrument would have to be lifted in the range of centimeters, we could just place a new shim here. The fine adjustment, however, of the guide is happening with those two feet. We can go into those um, later on. What I would like to say first, uh, just to complete the picture, uh, is that, of course, it is a crude guide, but nevertheless, there are some positioning requirements also to that. So we have uh, those pillars here, which act as mounts for fiducials. We have, and they are directly connected to the guide. So whenever you open up the bunker, you can uh, measure the position of the guide with those. If you are not certain that your guide is still correctly positioned on its kinematic mount on the inside of the tube here. You have the option to open up those um, flanges here and then you will find an, um, a rod which is sticking out higher than the, the flange on the vacuum chamber. So you can also easily uh, check the position of the guide with uh, fiducialization. You have this on three positions of this um, uh, tube. The tube itself you can also uh, fiducialize with these fiducialization points and the vacuum tube can then also in set be um, um, brought into position. Then uh, when it comes to the positioning of the whole system inside the bunker um, we have those 
positioning um, rings which will then engage with positioning rods that are pre-mounted inside the bunker. We have two of them, one is here and one is on the other side. I think that's pretty much the big picture when it comes to fiducialization. Um, then when we go further downstream we have uh, two more uh, flanges here. Uh, here we have uh, a flange where we could put a uh, measurement gauge, 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 whatever that is, the, the vacuum measurement device. Um, and then we have here also a uh, position on which one could attach an additional vacuum um, snorkel. The system here is intended to be evacuated through its downstream neighboring component, the chopper pit. This here is only the fallback solution. One really important thing when it comes to those components is there is, for example, this spanner ring. Um, this is not a standard of the shelf ring, even though it looks pretty much like it. But uh, we have replaced all the um, parts that could activate by titanium. So basically the, the screw is replaced, is a titanium screw, and also the bolts in here are titanium. Uh, that's, so it, it has to stay where it is. Then when we go further downstream, um, we have a reduction flange, uh, and then we have, imp the imp and inside the reduction flange, there is also a borated aluminum sheet, which acts as an additional shielding. Uh, we can maybe show that in another video. Uh, this is important because, um, as you remember, we have this uh, elliptical guide, which always breaks, uh, which is kind of a curved guide. And there are good positions to bring in shielding and break the line of sight. And here we also have this aluminum sheet, which kind of helps there. Um, and then at the downstream end of it, we have the standard ESS remote handling flange that we uh, implemented here. Um, that's, uh, we're, we're basically not using the flange to its full potential. We, uh, the flange is designed to be able to uh, attach and detach uh, remotely, and we only use it as a remotely detachable system. So it is ba for us, it is basically a fail safe in case we have to bring this out ever again. We can just loosen those two screws and take it out. Uh, but it's not something that is uh, intended to be done during regular maintenance. So a fallback solution. And when you come a little bit closer to me, you can now have a look inside this tube and you can see basically two different um, channels uh, in this uh, rectangle or in this uh, rectangular tube. Those two channels are the two beam paths that we are able to guide out. So in all the drawings you only see one beam puff. This is uh, what we will start with, that's what we have a budget for. But the instrument can also build, uh, transport a second beam puff and we already implemented that to this uh, in-bunker component with the idea that for a potential, with the idea that one can easily do an upgrade of the instrument without actually having to touch the in-bunker components. That's true for this component and also for its downstream neighbor and for our beam bridge guide as well. Thanks, Ren. One last question. Why is the tube black? Ooh, good question. So um, we have this uh, borated aluminum sheet here on the inside, and that's basically uh, the boron inside the aluminum that we care about or that we use as a neutron absorber. Here, on the other hand, uh, we went for uh, uh, Mirobor, which is a uh, more flexible and cheap solution to uh, get this covered. Uh, so basically, um, basically, it's uh, for neutron absorption. That's true. Okay. Thanks a lot, Sven. Thank you.